Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of our Flinch Squad Circuit Review Show. We are in the Moon Series, VGC 2019, and this week we're going to be kicking off with all the matches from Week 4. Week 3's matchups in the review episode were incredible going through all of those games, and I don't feel like it's going to ease up any more going into this week. Very exciting matchups. So without further ado, I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you do, remember to drop a like on the video. Make sure you do subscribe to the channel so you stay up to date with all of these review episodes at daily VGC 19 battle series, all our guides and stream uploads and everything else on top of that that we have going on in the channel at the minute. But without further ado, hope you enjoy the episode. Let's get into the pairings for week four. So we're going to see Xenophist Ace up against Stu. We've got Bevan versus Will. That's going to be delayed, unfortunately, because Bevan's still recovering from a little illness and we wish him all the best. Speedy recovery for the future. We've got Pokemarty versus Worm's Eye. We've got Imagi versus Purple. Again, I think there's a little delay with that match just because Purple entering the tournament a little bit late and playing a catch up with those matches. We've got Luigi versus Hectic, Johnny versus Pinko, Shade versus Urine, and Krim versus Alex. So, some exciting matches here to kick us off today. So we're going to kick off today with Pokemarty versus Worm's Eye. So we're going to see Worm's Eye challenging Pokemarty here and leading off with the Tapu Fini and the Incineroar as Marty leads off with the Incineroar and Xerneas. We're going to see that Fairy Aura activate, the Misty Terrain activate, and then the Intimidate cycle from both of these Incineroars, indicating that Marty's Incineroar is actually faster than Nigel. So we're going to see the Xerneas here on Marty's side of the field protect first turn as we do see a fake out and a Nature's Madness into that slot as Marty's Incineroar goes for a knock off into that type of finny removing the wicked berry big turn there as a geomancy now coming out from marty's Xerneas, we've got to be a bit wary about the raw on that opposing Incineroar on Nigel's side of the field. If it's got it, then it could put Marty in a real bad position. And we see an icy wind come out from the Tapu Fini, reducing the speed on both of these Pokemon on Marty's side of the field. And a U-turn from Marty's Incineroar. Going to adjust that board position, get something else out. And it is that Landorus double Intimidate now onto that Incineroar. Really important there, but we're going to see Nigel's Incineroar just pipped out with that U-turn as well and readjust his board position. The Xerneas is in a nice position now. It's got that special attack boost, but it is only plus one in speed, but it will be outspeeding everything on the field. We're going to see a Dazzling Gleam come straight out, chip everything down for good damage. Geomancy now coming out from the opposing Xerneas on Nigel's side of the field to match Marty's Xerneas. It is going to outspeed now because that Icy Wind drop that Marty's has took, and a Tectonic Rage now coming out from the Landorus on Marty's side of the field. You've got to think it is into that Xerneas to make sure that he is picking up the KO there, but it's not. It's into the Tapu Fini. Going to remove that from the field and dodge any more Icy Winds coming out onto the field. We're going to see Incineroar now hit the field for Nigel as he has got that boosted Xerneas up on the the field. He's got the speed advantage, remember, as we see Landorus switch out for the Incineroar on Marty's side of the field. Going to cycle the Intimidate again and have access to that Fake Out support the next turn as his Xerneas does protect. Avoiding any damage in Fake Out abuse this turn as we see a Dazzling Gleam come out from that Xerneas after the Fake Out from Nigel's Incineroar. We're going to see now Nigel's Xerneas protect as we see a Dazzling Gleam. No Fake Out coming out from Marty's Incineroar though as a U-turn just coming out into that slot, proccing that Figgy Berry and going back into Marty is going to bring in the Amoongus now. Great support here for that Xerneas sitting next to it as we see a Flare Blitz from the Incineroar now going into the Xerneas but not doing too much damage unfortunately. Rage Powder now coming out from the opposing Amoongus and opposite to Nigel's side of the field. Moonblast coming into that slot not doing very much damage. Another Dazzling Gleam will be enough to pick up the Incineroar. Critical hit there, don't think it mattered too much, but the Xerneas is hanging on just enough there for Nigel to get one more attack out from it. But he is going to protect this turn as we see another Dazzling Gleam come out from Marty. Xerneas is going to do big damage to that Evelto, indicating that it is an Assault Vest variant. Oblivion Wing into the Amoongus, but not quite enough to pick up the knockout there. Big, big survive there for Marty as he is able to get that Spore, and now his Xerneas is in a good position to just pick up the knockout with a Dazzling Gleam and a Rage Powder coming up from the Amoongus. Dazzling Gleam coming up from the opposing Xerneas. Marty is able to survive that quite comfortably and return with the Dazzling Gleam. Going to be enough to pick up the Xerneas on Nigel's side of the field, and the Ivaltal does stay asleep with this Xerneas. Going to be able to just clean up now with the Incineroar coming in for Marty and has access to that Faker 
knockout support as we see it go into that picking up the knockout in style and Marty taking game one so we'll go into game two big win there for Marty and uh, against such a, a really good opponent um, and he's really maneuvering and showing a lot of class with his board positioning going into this one taking advantage of the geomancy boosts when he had the opportunity to we're going to see Xerneas and Incineroar out for Nigel and Amoongus and Landorus out for Marty so we're going to see Landorus switch straight in for Nigel here get that intimidate again onto the Landorus as we see a fake out into the Amoongus slot and a Z move comes straight out from the Landorus on Marty's side of the field you've got to think this is going to be into the Incineroar and it is as it fires off but minus two might not be enough to pick up the knockout here but it oh it actually survives Incineroar surviving barely Figgy Berry proccing there the Amoongus now switching out Incineroar coming onto the field gonna get that double Intimidate onto the opposing Incineroar and Intimidate onto the opposing Landorus and Nigel following suit with this Z move now gonna fire this off into Marty's side of the field you've got to imagine it's gonna be into that Incineroar here and it is and this is only minus one so this is probably enough to take it out which it is big KO there for Nigel taking down that Incineroar and Marty pulling out the sword stance wow really getting rid of that double intimidate and putting Landorus back into a nice position a big critical hit there for the opposing Xerneas onto the Landorus with that flare blitz a bit unfortunate there for Marty but he is going to take this advantage this opportunity to go for that Geomancy now power up the power herb get those boosts off in one turn and um, what is the opposing Landorus on Nigel's side of the field going to do we have seen it outspeed it goes for the rock slider is oh wow the Landorus actually survives one HP invisible focus sash that is crazy picking up the knockout on Incineroar and allowing the Amoongus now to come onto the field the Xerneas is in a great position to knock out the Landorus. We're going to see a dazzling gleam here from the Xerneas and another rock slide from the Landorus on Marty's side of the field. Is it enough to get this Amoongus or does it pick up the flinch? Does pick up the flinch. Flinch squad all over the place. We see a dazzling gleam again come out from the Xerneas. Enough to get the Landorus now. That flinch was so huge for Marty and really puts him in a prime position to pick up this game as the Amoongus goes down to that second rock slide. Xerneas now coming back onto the field but really in a tight position against this boosted Xerneas on Marty side of the field we're going to see the Amoongus switch in now for that Landorus as Moonblast comes out onto the Xerneas and this should be enough and it is and Marty picking up a big win to kick us off today so it's going to be Johnny Hacks versus Pinko going into this next one here it's going to be a very exciting game we saw Pinko have a real good game last week so it'll be interesting these two are having a great time in the tournament at the minute Johnny off to an unbeatable start in this circuit so can Pinko overcome this we're going to see Johnny lead off with the Melotic and Rayquaza and Pinko lead off with with the Crobat and Cinero. We're gonna see the competitive ability proc on that Melotic, that becoming a big threat straight away. We're gonna see a fake out from this Incineroar into that Melotic and the Z Tailwind coming out from the Crobat. Is it gonna be that Z Tailwind or is it gonna be the Z? It is gonna be the Z Tailwind from the Crobat, not the Z Brave Bird. We are gonna see the Incineroar switch right out now for Pinko and bring that Kyogre into the field, taking advantage of that Tailwind as soon as possible. Quick Guard coming out from the Crobat. It's gonna see a Scald come out from the Melotic pick up the knockout onto that Crobat easy knockout and a knockoff into that Kyogre knocking off a Mago Berry and we see the Necrozma now hit the field not generally something you see taking advantage of Tailwind but here I think it can do a decent job we're going to see the double up into the Melotic as a U-turn comes out from the Incineroar Johnny really playing around these Tailwind turns very well as the Amoongus now hits the field and um puts on a lot of pressure especially with that rage powder we are going to see a scald now from the Kyogre into that Amoongus slot and a photon geyser doubling into that slot now able to pick up the Amoongus there take it out and the Melotic free to attack this turn throwing out a scald into the Necrozma in the rain doing big damage as that tailwind does end Cinero now coming back in for Johnny as he cycles the Intimidate all important onto that Dustman Necrozma shutting down its ability to hit so hard protect coming out from Kyogre as a protect comes out from this Necrozma just to burn the fake out turn here from that Incineroar as a Skull doubles up from the Melotic. I'm going to see the Necrozma now switch out, Incineroar come back onto the field, cycle that Intimidate and boost that Melotic even further now with that competitive ability there. Uh, as we see a Thunder from the Kyogre into that slot and it's not quite enough to pick up the knockout there as we see a Scald from the Melotic into the Incineroar pick up the knockout there and things aren't looking too great for Marty right now as the rain does stop. He's not got that 100% accurate Thunder and the Melotic is on play 
plus four right now. It's, it's going crazy, so we see a Scald from the Kyogre into the Incineroar. Is he able to take it? Scald into the Necrozma slot and a knockoff into that slot as well. We are going to see a Thunder. It does hit outside of the rain. Is this enough? It does take down the Melotic. Big KO there for Pinko coming back into this one as a knockoff coming out. And the Necrozma actually hangs on. Crazy survival there. Trick Room coming out from the Dustman Necrozma. Pinko switching this matchup so I can't believe he's actually coming back into this one. He's got a chance now to do some work here. The Krozma going to protect as the Rayquaza goes for the extreme speed. We are going to see a Flare Blitz doubling into that slot as a Skull comes out from the Kyogre, picking up the knockout onto the Incineroar. And it is 2-1. The Rayquaza is the only thing that's left. Extreme speed into the Dustman Necrozma. Thunder not missing from this Kyogre, hitting the Rayquaza, doing big damage, big critical hit there. It, can the Rayquaza take down this Kyogre? It's not enough. Oh, the Thunder misses. Can it survive? Another extreme speed, this Kyogre. That'll be the question here. The Thunder goes into that Protect Dimension Sim back to normal, and we are going to see Johnny not take any risks here. Just proc that Z move. The Supersonic Sky Strike come out from the Rayquaza. I can't believe how close to the end this game came. It felt like Johnny was in such a good position after that Tailwind went up, but... Pinko managing to get the Trick Room up and pull that one back. Such a tight finish and Johnny taking game one. We'll go into game two here with Johnny leading off with the Rayquaza and Amoongus and the Aromatis now coming out onto the field for Pinko with that Lorantis. So Lorantis switching out straight away. Necrozma going to hit the field now as we see a Dragon Dance from the Rayquaza boosting its speed and attack stat as the Amoongus just goes for a spot into that Aromatis. He's going to shut that option down this turn. Falls asleep and takes a turn of sleep here. So... We are going to see a Z move now straight off from this Rayquaza. It's probably going to be into the Aromatis trying to deny that Trick Room from this Pokemon um, if it does wake up this turn. So we are going to see this. Is it enough? It is more than enough to pick up the knockout here as we see a Photon Geyser from the Dustman across my into the Amoongus. Pick up the knockout there. Take out that support option for Johnny. And you think now if Pingo can get the Trick Room up now with the Incineroar beside it with this Fake Out support, it's going to be in a real good position to go forward in this match. Cut on and withdrawn straight away. Incineroar coming onto the field, cycling that Intimidate onto Pinko's Dustman Necrozma here. We are going to see a Fake Out into that Incineroar, leaving the Rayquaza free to attack this turn. It is going to use Fly, goes out of the picture for this turn, and it will avoid any attacks this next turn. Sun Seal Strike coming out from the Dustman Necrozma into the Incineroar. Going to do a little bit of chip damage as a Bulldoze comes out from the <laughs> Incineroar next to the Dustman Necrozma, lowering the speed on everything on the field, hitting that Incineroar for decent damage and proccing a weakness policy as well, boosting the attack and special attack of the Dustman Necrozma as a knockoff comes out into the Incineroar, removing the Assault Vest there and the Fly doing a nice bit of chip damage. Incineroar now switching out for the Cartana as we see the Incineroar and Pinko side switch out for the Lorantis and we are going to see a Photon Geyser into that Rayquaza slot and it is not quite enough as we see another fly come out from the Rayquaza here. Cartana going to withdraw again, the Incineroar going to withdraw and come back onto the field, get that Intimidate, proc the Contra ability on the Lorantis and taking this opportunity to get that super power off into the Incineroar, pick up the knockout there with the Sunseal Strike not hitting anything because the Rayquaza is in the air, the fly coming out, and actually Lorantis takes it after that super power boost to the defense ability, proccing that Iapa Berry, putting it in such a nice position going into this next turn. Cartana going to protect the Dustman and Cosma has to hit into the Rayquaza, Rayquaza going for the extreme speed just to try and get a last bit of damage off into this Lorantis before it goes down to a Photon Geyser from the Dustman Necrozma and we are going to see the dimensions twist back to normal but it all feels a little bit too far for Johnny to come back now. We're going to see Sacred Sword into the Lorantis. It does hang on with that defense boost taking the, uh, the Cortana down to its sash getting another defense and attack boost with this superpower and Pinko able to wrap this one up tying the match up as we go into game three and Johnny leading off in game three with the Melotic and the Incineroar as we see Incineroar and Dustman of course might come out for Pinko. We're going to see all the Intimidate cycle here, proc that competitive ability on that Melotic again like we saw in game one. We saw how that game ended, so will it be the same? Will Johnny take it or will Pinko take it here? We're going to see a Scald and Fake Out into the Incineroar on Pinko's side of the field. As a Trick Room now is set up from that Dustman of Crosma, give him the room to do that. We're going to see the Incineroar now switch out, Kyogre hit the field for Pinko as he's trying to get and maneuver himself into a position to start taking and making use of these Trick Room turns. We're going to see the Melotic just protect us as a Photon Geyser comes into that slot as the Incineroar switches out with a U-turn on the Dustman Necrozma and 
Among Us hitting the field. I'm going to see the Dustman and Cosmo just protect now as we see the Among Us go for a spawn into that slot with the Milosic going for a cover and the Kyogre hitting a thunder, big thunder into that slot doing big damage there. Now we're going to see the Among Us switch out for Johnny. Cinero hit the field again get that intimidate all important intimidate onto the dust main necrozma as we see it switch out laurent is going to hit the field now i'm going to try and take some of these water type attacks that are coming out from this very threatening melodic as a water spout coming out from pinko not worrying about that amoongus predicting maybe a switch in there as we see the amoongus come out now for that incinero that has dropped a new melodic being forced out now because of the threat from the thunder here from this kyoga as it does protect this turn and grass not coming into that slot with the requaza on the field coming in to take a leaf blade from this lorantis requaza switching straight back out for the melodic now Kyoga switching out and the Incineroar coming in. Really nice switch there from Johnny to take advantage of this Intimidator support coming back in, making sure that the Melotic's coming back onto the field and being as dangerous as possible as a knockoff comes out from this Amoongus with a Grass not coming in to that Incineroar. It's not quite enough to pick up the KO there as the rain does stop. Now Amoongus switching out. Rayquaza going to hit the field again. Does the Melotic protect here? It's got to be feel very threatened from the Leaf Blade. We do see a protect there. Flare Blitz coming out into this Rayquaza. Do we see the double up into this slot? I wonder, Incineroar going down to the recoil damage from the Flare Blitz, Leap Blade coming out into the Melotic as we see Dustman and Cosma now hit the field once again. Got to imagine we're going to see that Trick Room come out from the Necrozma if it can set it up. So you see the Rayquaza power up that Z move again, Supersonic Sky Strike, it's going to be into the Laurentis. It hasn't had those super power boosts yet, so it's not likely going to be able to take this and it is a clean one hit KO. Johnny taking a big, big KO there and a Skull doing huge damage from this Melotic. It's Photon guys are now into that Melotic, picking up the kill. Amoongus coming out onto the field and Kyogre coming out for Pinko going to summon that rain again. But you've got to remember that the rain active on the field is not getting any boost because of this airlock ability on the Rayquaza here. As we see the Rayquaza go for the extreme speed into the protect on the Kyogre. And Photon guys are not enough to get the Amoongus as it puts the Necrozma to sleep here. We can see, ah, oh, Dragon Dance coming out from the Rayquaza trying to boost itself up so it can take something out this next turn. A Thunder coming out from the Kyogre. Where is it going to be? It's into the Amoongus, picking up the knockout there, taking out this threat because that thing would be putting Kyogre to sleep this turn if left unchecked or going for a Grass Knot. We are going to see Protect now from the Kyogre and an Extreme Speed into the Necrozma slot from this Rayquaza on Johnny's side of the field. Necrozma staying asleep. We're going to see another Extreme Speed into that slot, trying to get rid of this Pokemon. There's a Thunder now coming out and hitting. Remember the the airlock is up so it's not 100% accurate so Pinko risking this every turn we do see the Necrozma now wake up go for that protect we are going to see a fly from the Rayquaza but because Thunder acts when a Pokemon is vulnerable in the air it still hits 100% and Pinko picking up the victory there so we'll go into our next match that we're going to cover today and that is going to be Shade versus Urines and he is going to lead out with Gran on Smeagol and we're going to see Shade lead off with that type of Finny and Sogaleo here. We're going to get the Misty Train up, it does help against the Spores and lovely kisses that potentially come out from that Smeagol. Got to worry about the fake out support here as we do see Shade switch out. The Sogaleo brings Zygod onto the field, proc that Misty Seed because of the Misty Train, get that defensive boost in special defense and a follow me coming up from the Smeagol protecting this Groudon on this turn. So you see Nature's Madness into that slot and the Groudon going for the Sword Stance getting boosted up coming very threatening very quickly here we're going to see the type of finny now switch out and cinema going to hit the field and uh, reduce those attacks that attack boost by one stage as we see another follow me from this meagle going to see a coil from the Zygarde. It's going to boost its attack, its defense, and its accuracy going into this next turn. So Precipice Blades comes out from the Groudon, is able to pick up the knockout onto this Incineroar plus one, and a mood boost coming out from the Smeagol. And um, the Zygarde sitting in not a bad position now. So Galea going to hit the field once again as we see another follow me from the Smeagol. We are going to see the Sunseal Strike from the Sogaleo. Probably is going to get knocked out this turn from Impressive's Blades because the Zygarde is very vulnerable right now. It is going to go for that Thousand Arrows, but because it's so defensively bulky, Groudon able to take that. We're going to see a Tectonic Rage now come out from this plus one Groudon. If it is into this Zygarde, you've got to think that this is going to close the matchup for Yorin. Yorin, but we do see it into that Sogaleo. It is going to pick up the big knockout there. 
and it's still plus one. And, you know, Urine hasn't got too much to be able to deal with this as the Tepafini comes back in. Talonflame going to have that priority Brave Bird and is going to be fired off into the Tepafini, take it down to half health as we see Nature's Madness into the Groudon. Taking it down to just over 30% health with another coil coming out from the Zygarde. I'm going to try and take this Precipice Blades from this Groudon. Does take the Finny down, put the Zygarde down to about 50% health and really activating that power construct ability, becoming the complete form. Zygarde now on the field, still in not a bad position, getting all that health back. We are going to see a Brave Bird come out, but because of this defensive boost, it is able to take those quite comfortably and put the Precipice Blades from this Groudon here. And not quite being able to pick up the knockout, we are going to see a Thousand Arrows, it picks up both. Pokemon with a critical hit on Talonflame, which I don't think matters, and the Groudon as well. Zygarde showing its super good strength here, um, as the Xerneas now coming out onto the field for Urine. He has got one Pokemon left. We've got to remember the extreme speed coming out, not going to be enough as a Moonblast now. Able to come out, and Urine securing the victory in this game one. Big, big win there for Urine, and taking advantage of that Sword Stance turn one, and putting so much pressure on, not really allowing Shade back into the game from there. He did very well with the Zygarde, but just wasn't quite enough in the end the talent flame doing enough here for Yorin to close that first one up. We're going to see the Sogaleo Zygarde out for Shade as he switches that Sogaleo out straight away turn 1, bringing that type of Finny and activating the Misty Seed as we see Yorin lead off with that Smeagol that's going to go for that Follow Me this first turn and the Groudon again. We see the Coil come out straight away from this Zygarde as we are going to see the Groudon again go for that Sword Zans, put itself in a really threatening position and going into this turn 2. Smeagol still active on the field, still got potentially that Focus that we haven't seen yet. But pulling out another follow me, just not wanting to consider those Nature's Madness into the ground on here as the Thousand Arrows comes out, hits both targets, will pick up the knockout onto Smeagol. Not do massive damage to the ground on, but do some nice chip damage in the process as we see Granium Z from this ground on now. Which target is it going to be into? Is it going to be into that Zygarde? That's the target I'd be wanting to go to, but it's not into that Zygarde. I'm wanting to get rid of that Tapu Fini and does remove it from the field here as we see a Talonflame now come on and hit the field as Whimsicott comes out for Shade. What shenanigans are we going to see? We're going to see a tickle from the Whimsicott. Great tech here from Shade, reducing that attack and the defensive stat on the ground. And we are going to see a Brave Bird come out from the town frame into the Whimsicott. Take it down to its Focus Sash. Take some recall damage as we are going to see just another coil come out from the Zygarde. Not wanting to attack this turn. Bide its time. Groudon now throwing out a Precipice Blade. It's going to pick up the knockout onto the Whimsicott. And because of that coil, just not being able to do enough damage here, especially after that tickle from the Whimsicott. We're going to see the Sogaleo just protect here, avoid any precipice blade damage. Groudon going to protect as well as we see the Talonflame go for a Tailwind now. Set that Groudon up for these last few turns as we see a thousand arrows come out. It is going to be enough to pick up the knockout onto that Talonflame now. And is it that Xerneas in the back? Now you've got the Groudon and can check the Sogaleo, but because it's only on neutral, I don't know if it's going to be enough to pick up the knockout onto this Sogaleo, which you really needed to. And oh, heartbreaking for Urine as the Precipice Blades, the curse of the Precipice Blades misses that Sogaleo, giving the opportunity for it to set the Trick Room. But you've got to think if it hits there, it's maybe in range to be knocked out by the Precipice Blades. As we see the Trick Room set up, the Zygote's Power Struct, activate and Zygarde 100% on the field with that Sogaleo as well. Xerneas now going to protect very threatened from the Sogaleo as a thousand arrows comes out from the Zygarde going to be hitting into the Groudon picking up the knockout there and it's going to be an easy easy way for Shade to pick up the knockout here and close this one out tie this game up with this Sogaleo going for its Z move into the Xerneas but it is behind that protect but now too much for Urine to do as we go into game three tied up. Urine not changing these leads going for that Smeagol and the Groudon again and we see Shade switch it up here with the Whimsicott this time and the Zygarde. So we are going to see a fake out this time around from the Smeagol into that Whimsicott. Stop it doing anything this turn as we see a Sword Stance from the Groudon here and boost itself up once again. Put itself into that really threatening position here on the field for Urine. We've seen a follow me here from the Smeagol avoiding any encore shenanigans as we see a extreme speed into that Smeagol and the encore is going to be onto that Groudon. Really nice play there from Shade and locking the Groudon into the sword stances making it unable to do anything other than sword stance for the next three to four turns we do see a tailwind from the whimsicott here and the flare blitz coming out from the talent flame going to remove the whimsicott from the field we're going to see a thousand hours or a coil from the zygod now just a thousand hours wanting to get attack and damage onto that talent flame and the ground on here as we see another sword stance this ground on now on plus six if it can get past 
and through these turns of sword stancing then it can become so threatening and really just sweep through this entire team on shared side of the field we are going to see the Sogaleo switch out straight away for the Incineroar you aren't opting not to keep it on the field switching into the Xerneas now as a thousand arrows comes out again from the Zygarde into the Talonflame and also doing some nice chip damage to that Xerneas here so we are going to see the Groudon hit the field once again we're going to see the Groudon just protect this turn get around this fake out potential from the Incineroar as we see a thousand arrows come out do some nice damage to the Xerneas as we see a Dazzling Gleam come out not going for the Geomancy boost and a U-turn coming out from this Incineroar you've got to think here would have been a good time potentially to go for that Geomancy even though you've got the Sogaleo in the back we are going to see the Power Construct activate on this Zygod once again it is going to take its complete form and become very threatening it's getting all that HP back as we see the Xerneas now protect and the Groudon on your own side is going to be lying in wait as the Sogaleo goes for this Sunsteel Strike. Well, it's the, the Sunray Strike, isn't it? Into that Xerneas behind the Protect. Doing some big damage as a coil comes out from the Zygon. Shade taking some big steps to take this match now. As we see, a Z-move now coming out from this Groudon. Is it into that Sogaleo slot? You've got to think it probably is. But the Zygod is going to be doing some easy pickup. The Zygod now is going to be so threatening to the Xerneas this next turn because of the extreme speed. So I don't know if it's going to be enough for Urine to be able to go for the Groudon and take down both the Zygod and the Incineroar in both these turns. We're going to see a fake out into the Groudon here. Extreme speed into that Xerneas. Protect, the double protect does fail as the Groudon does flinch and it just feels a bit too far now for the Groudon to come back into this. Do you see the Precipice Blades into that Incineroar? It is able to take it because the Intimidate there, the Thousand Hour is now coming out and doing some nice damage with a flare blitz following up from the Incineroar and oh it just hangs on but in extreme speed range and that is going to be it. Going into our next one today it's going to be Krim versus Alex. So, so we're going to see Alex lead off with this stack attacker and Smeagol and Krim lead off with the Crobat and Sogaleo here. So we're going to see the Smeagol straight away go for that follow me. No fake outs here as we see a taunt from the Crobat going into that Smeagol. Going to shut it down this next turn as a Sunsteel Strike from the Sogaleo. Going to be into that Smeagol as well and potentially take it down to its Sash and it is in a tight spot this next turn as we see the Trick Room come out from the stack attacker setting up the dimensions, setting up the speed control going into this next turn. It is still threatening from that Sogaleo though so it has to be careful around that. Stack Attack are now switching out because of that and bringing in the Xerneas now. Not something you see too often taking advantage of the Trick Room but Alex playing this really nicely to soak up that super power from the Sogaleo here. As we see the Smeagol go for a struggle. It's just going to take itself down with the recoil damage from that attack and the Crawlback going to be able to get a Super Fang off into the Xerneas. Groudon now hitting the field for Alex. Under this Trick Room this is where it really thrives so Krim got to feel a little bit threatened here as it does switch out his Sogaleo on bringing that Ludicolo to soak up any Precipice Blades attacks coming out from the Groudon here. We are going to see a Sword Stance come out from this Groudon. It is Sword Stance week on the review show. As we see a Haze just come out from the Crowbar, expecting that or a Geomancy maybe as we see a Fake Out now from the Ludicolo into that Stack Attacker. Trying to stop that and shut that down here as we see a Fire Punch into the Crowbat with a Super Fan coming into the Groudon. It's a rock Slide coming out now. Going to be able to pick up the Knockout onto the Crowbat from the Stack Attacker as it gets a beast boost as well to boot and we are going to see the Ludicolo flinch as a Precipice Blades comes out. Single target should be enough to take down the Ludicolo which it is from this Groudon taking Krim down to just two Pokemon. Dimensions turn back to normal, perfect timing though as the Kyogre and the Sogaleo now can hit the field with this Drizzle ability. You've got to worry about why God on this stack attacker and just launching a water spot into that slot going to see the Groudon switch out now, the Xerneas come into the field and there is the Wide God from Alex's side of the field. As we do see a, y a water spout, it is blocked from that stack attack as we see a Sunsteel strike now from the Sogaleo. It is going to be into that Xerneas slot, pick up the knockout there but Groudon now able to come in back onto the field for Alex and because of that access to the Wide God, it does put Kyogre in a little bit of a tighter spot. We are going to see the Groudon now just protect for Alex as we see a Z-move come out from Krim, it is going to be the Waterium Z. We've seen him make use of this in past formats. Is it going to be into the Groudon? It's probably in range to be picked up, but behind that Protect, it probably just hangs on and it does hang on quite nicely here. As we see a Super Power come out into that Stack Attacker and be more than enough to pick up the knockout there and put 
Krim in a really nice position to close this one out as we see a water spout now. No wide guard to protect the Groudon, even in Sun. Going to be enough single target and Krim picking up the win game one. Really close game there. I think it could have gone either way. Both players doing really well. And we'll go into game two, see if Alex can tie this up and take it to a game three. We're going to see Alex lead off with that Smeagol and the Xerneas. And again, Krim lead off with Sogaleo and Crobat. We're going to see the Xerneas switch out straight away for the Groudon here. Bring the Sun to the field as we see the Smeagol. Just pull out the spiky shield, going to protect itself this turn as a taunt coming out into that slot and a Sunseal Strike from the Sogaleo into that Zonia slot, which is now the Groudon and doing big damage, putting 50% damage, going to be able to pick up the knockout potentially this next turn. We are going to see Sogaleo just switch out and the Ludicolo come in to take any potential Precipice Blades that are coming out from the Groudon. There's a taunt now coming out from the Crobat into that Smeagol slot, shutting down its ability to support this next turn as we see a Tectonic Rage from this Groudon. It is going to be into that Ludicolo, you've got to imagine, and Ludi going to be able to take this quite comfortably. Still take a lot of damage, but it's not going to be knocked out, I wouldn't have thought, from this attack. Wow, doing a lot more than what I actually thought here as we see the Smeagol's Moody Boosts activate. Smeagol switching out now because of that Torn and Xerneas hitting the field as we are probably going to see a Protect on the Groudon as we do here and the Crobat and is open to get a Tailwind up which is very nice putting his Krim in a really nice position going into this next turn. Groudon going to be forced to switch out now, Smeagol going to come in um, Xerneas protecting on Alex's side of the field as we see a Super Fang into that slot and a Grass Knot into that Smeagol which was the Groudon doing big damage there and taking the Smeagol down into knockout range this next turn. We are going to see the Smeagol just go for a spiky shield protect itself this next turn as a super fan comes out into the Xerneas as a grass knot comes into that slot and the Xerneas is going to just go for a dozen lean pick up the knockout onto the Ludicolo but this paves the way for the Sogaleo to come back onto the field now the sunlight does fade and um, Krim really kind of taking the steps now that he needs to kind of close this one down Sogaleo coming onto the field Smeagol going to switch out stack attack are going to hit the field now for Alex as Xerneas just protects again avoiding any damage this turn as we see a taunt in that stack attack so I'm going to stop any potential trick room shenanigans going into this next turn. Crobat sitting good on the field now as Xerneas goes out for the Groudon, bringing that sun back to the field. For Alex Stackett, I'm going to switch out, reset that taunt and another tailwind coming out from the crawback going to get that back activated. The superpower comes out into that stack attack slot, picking up the knockout onto the Smeagol. And with the Tailwind up, Sogaleo, we know, can pick up the knockout onto this ground on this next turn, so in a really nice position. We're going to see a Protect from the Sogaleo, not wanting to risk anything as we see a Taunt into that Stack Attacker here. Just wants to deny that Trick Room this turn from this Stack Attacker, as it just didn't, doesn't even worry about going for it. Goes for a Rock Slide, picks up the knockout onto the Crobat. But you got to think, if the, Cro the Kyogre's in the back, this gives Krim the perfect opportunity to get it in and start doing some big damage and a lot of work. You've got that Hydro Vortex into the ground on slot, because it has just Protect. Super power into the stack attack, and that should be enough to close up the game for Krim um, in this set. We are going to see the water spout, no wide guard, just picking up a clean knockout here. And with that tailwind up, we aren't able to see any way for Alex to come back in this one, unfortunately. Really good set from both players, and Krim able to lock this one up. He is going to pull it out in style, though, and close this one up with a Hydro Vortex. Alex being a good sport and allowing player to finish the turn and not forfeit so excellent game to both of these players here and uh, what a way for us to kind of finish up the mid part of the show before we got into the showdown match so our first match today is going to be Xenophis versus Stu we are going to see Stu lead off with the Tornadus Tapu Lele and Xenophis lead off with the Tapu Koko Ludicolo we are going to see the Psychic Seed activate on that Tapu Lele boosting those special defenses as the Tailwind comes out from the Tornadus and a Discharge comes out from the Tapu Koko as the Groudon switches in really nice synergy there getting the Paralysis onto everything on Stu's side of the field going to put him in a nicer position going into this next one we just see a Discharge come out pick up the knockout onto the Tornadus and lead the way for the Kyogre to stay in. Stu predicting that the Groudon may be switching out, switching the Kyogre straight out to get advantage next turn, but the, <laughs> the Groudon just protecting here as the Coco is left to just be able to discharge even further here. We are going to see the side shot come out, pick up the KO onto the Groudon now as Ludicolo hits the field and really start to threaten that Kyogre. So you see an Ice Beam into the Ho-O, oh, not quite enough to do any damage there from the Tabulele, pick the knock up onto the Ludicolo. So you see a Skull this time 
slam into the Incineroar Tailwind now from the Hot or as the Lele is paralyzed. Big turn there. It is an ally switch from the Tempo Lele, but not going to be enough to dodge the Brave Bird kill into that Incineroar slot and protect it this turn. As we see, Xenophis is going to be able to kind of clean things up here with that Water Spout, just doing minimal damage with the Ludicolo out on the field and supporting that Hot or super well. So Xenophis taking the first game here really nicely. And we're going into game two here. We're going to see Xenophis now lead off with the ground on Ludicolo. Stu leads off with that Tornadus Ludicolo. As we see the Hot or switch straight in, fake out onto the Tornadus and a Grass Knot into that Hot or. We are going to see the Kyogre now hit the field as the Hurricane comes out into the Ludicolo as a Tailwind is set up on Hot or side of the field. We are going to see the Electric Seed activate on the Hot or as the Tailwind matched from the Tornadus. Thunder into that Tapu Lele slot, but not quite enough, especially with the Psychic Seed and the Ally Switch coming out, giving Kyogre all the room it needs to get that Water Spout off and giving Stu a big advantage here as the Grado now comes in, disrupts out that Rain on the field, picks up the Knockout onto the Ludicolo, doing some nice damage to the Ludi, but also Kyogre coming back onto the field, getting the Rain up and putting that Ludicolo in a position to pick up the knockout quite easy there. So tying this set up as we see Xenophis go into game three with the Hot or and the Ludicolo and Stu lead off with his Ludicolo and Tornadus here. You're gonna see the trade out of the fake out trade there, but Xenophis making the mistake of going into the Ludicolo rather than the Tornadus this turn, maybe protecting a protect there. So you see a Tailwind come out from this Tornado, setting the Tailwind up now on Stu. So the field was seen to protect this turn as the Lele trying to get rid of this type of Coco on Xenophis' side of the field here as it does. A uh, Discharge comes out and picks up the knockout. Kyogre coming in, coming straight out. Ludicolo going to hit the field. Hurricane going to pick up the knockout onto that Tapu Coco as we see another fake out tailwind from the tornadoes and pick up the knockout onto the Ludicolo as the Ho'o now hits the field we've got that Waterium Z which is going to come out into that Ho'o pick up the KO in the rain and now Xenophis looking like he's not really got too many options but what a great set for us to have Luigi versus Hectic so we've got Luigi on the bottom of our screen leading off with the Xerneas and the Landorus and Hectic leading off with the Incineroar and Xerneas here so Intimidates all around and Xerneas out on the field Xerneas on Luigi's side going to switch straight out into the Incineroar and we are going to see a Zeromancy from the opposing Xerneas on Hectic side of the field straight away. We are going to see the Xerneas now protect. Landorus protecting as we see a roll come out from the Incineroar on Luigi's side of the field. Get rid of those boosts and a Tectonic Ridge into the Incineroar. Huge damage there as we see a U-turn out from Luigi getting the Misty Terrain up with the type of Finny out on the field. Removing those Geomancy boosts is so big though for Luigi in this match and puts Hectic a little bit further behind. We've seen Oblivion Wing come out and then Nature's Madness into that. Evelto doing some nice damage there as we see the Nature's Madness and a Flare Blitz into that. Amoongus as it switches in for the Xerneas, removing that from the field. And just these two Restricteds now out in the field as we see Hectic removing the Incineroar from the field and now the Xerneas coming onto the field for Luigi. He's just going to not even bother going for the Geomancy here, just going straight for that Moonblast into the Xerneas here as we see a Haze come out from the Tapu Fini here. We are going to see a Protect from Luigi's Xerneas. The Berry procking on that Tapu Fini as an Icy Wind comes out getting the speed advantage. This is huge. So we see a Moonblast now pick up the knockout onto the opposing Xerneas. Heal Pulse come out from Luigi into the Xerneas and now he is able to pick up the win and take that one lead win going into game two here. Hectic now lead off with the Incineroar Xerneas and the Amoongus and Xerneas come out for Luigi here. Straight away switching out the Amoongus for the Incineroar here going for that geomancy turn one though luigi taking a big lead as the dazzling game comes out from hectic's xerneas and it is protecting now moonblast coming into that slot with a u-turn coming out from the Incineroar into the Amoongus and doing the same on Hectic side but the Finny coming onto the field now with that Misty Terrain. Finny coming out with the Haze and removing those boosts as Landorus hits the field now. We are going to see a Dazzling Gleam and then the Z move into the Amoongus removing that from the field as an Icy Wind comes out from the type of Finny into the Xerneas. The type of Finny now coming out for Luigi going to return the favour as a Dazzling Gleam comes out from the Xerneas into that Tapu Fini. So Landorus just protects this turn with a heal pulse now supporting Luigi's Xerneas. We're going to see a sword stance from the Landorus become super threatening here 
As we see the Xerneas now switch out for the Incineroar as Landorus does protect with the Nature's Madness coming out and Tapu Fini on Luigi's side of the field removing all of those boosts to attack that the Landorus has. We're going to see maybe a misclick from Hectic here as he goes for the heal pulse into the protect on that Landorus putting itself a little bit further behind than he wants to be as an icy wind now comes out from the Tapu Fini onto the Tapu Fini on Hectic's side of the field and that Landorus now the Moonblast able to pick up the knockout and Luigi taking this set to zero as Hectic is going to strike struggle now with just this Xerneas on his side of the field to deal with everything. We're going to see another haze there remove any drops to the Xerneas on Luigi's side of the field. Moonblast come out and the Incineroar coming out for Luigi giving all the support that Xerneas needs for Luigi's side of the field. Moonblast and all we need to see is a flare blitz here as Hectic goes go for that last stitch attempt to get the Geomancy up. So Luigi taking the set 2-0, really nice set here. So as you can see on your screen, we had our first match today, Poker Marty versus Worm's Eye. Marty picking up the 2-0 win there. We had Xenophis versus Stu, Stu winning that 2-1. Luigi versus Hectic, 2-0 to Luigi. Pinko picking up the victory 2-1 over Johnny Hacks, who was unbeatable before this week's round. So Pinko really coming back into it now and putting his stamp on this tournament really incredible game there from both players today shared beating your 2-1 very close set again and another brilliant set from both players going into this week and then finishing up with Krim versus Alex Krim winning 2-0 there so they're the results guys and we'll have a quick update with the league table as we go into this week's results you can see Stu is leading the pack this week knocking Johnny off that first place spot so Stu with four wins here on 12 points Luigi hot on his heels in second place with 10 points Johnny down in 10 um, third place with 10 points you've got Shade sneaking up on the pack now putting his mark on this tournament 10 points tied for second place with the rest of them Pinko now coming back into this tournament with nine points then followed by Will with six points he has only played two he's played a game less than everyone else though so you've got to remember that Will has got a game in hand so he can put himself and propel himself right back into the mix with another win there we've got Krim who is sneaking up behind there with six points then Imagine on six Wim's eye on six Alex on six Urine in 11th with five points Poker Marty getting a win this week really nice win for him coming back into this one on four points putting him up to 12th place Hectic on 13 in 13th place with one point Xenophist with one point then we've got Purple who has got a lot of games to play and then Bebim who is out injured at the minute who we wish all the best to so that rounds up all the matches this week guys I hope you've enjoyed the, the review episode it's been incredible I mean the Johnny and Pingo game was incredible Pokemon versus Nigel was amazing and then Shade really showcasing that Zygarde as well as all the other matches this week and Stu coming out of the traps from nowhere and taking a big lead and really you know he's going to be going into the rest of these these weeks and making sure that he wants to secure that top spot and take that trophy next week's episode we'll have the trophies and medals and some of the goodies that players will be getting as prizes in this moon series circuit as well as explaining the flinch squad points that go towards getting an invite for that live streamed invitational at the end of the year which is going to have some huge prizes so thank you for tuning in guys i hope you've enjoyed today's episode leave your comments in the comment section below and we'll see you next week for another episode of a flinch squad review show so until then take care of yourselves and bye bye